Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five Home Edition. It is Tuesday, March something. It's April. Oh, <laughs> it's it is April 28th. <laughs> it's April 28th. I'm Caitlin Moynihan. I'm Beth Stevens, and I know the date. And Beth knows the date. Mm -hmm. And we don't have Paul today, so we're going to have a fun little like girls' time. But who's our guest today? Oh, the always dashing Tony Yazbek yes. who will be in Flying Over Sunset at Lincoln Center Theater this fall. Yes, Beth, you know a lot about Flying Over Sunset. I know a thing or two about Flying you know Over Sunset. You got to do a fun interview with them for Building Broadway, was that it? I spoke with the creators, yes. Oh, I did. That's amazing. Okay, so we're gonna have, you're gonna talk to Tony all about the goods, but first we're going to do top news. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to talk about the fact that, Beth, today was supposed to be Tony Nominations Day. It was, but it's okay, Caitlin, because we have a Tony with us, with Tony Asbeck. I've been working on that joke for a long time. I didn't okay, really... Okay, that was really <laughs> good. People. But we didn't get Tony noms today. We did get Off-Broadway Alliance nominations, though. So that is very exciting. This is the 10th annual Off-Broadway Alliance Awards, and they honor stuff that was not for profit productions that open Off-Broadway. And everything's going to be announced on May 19th. That's coming up, so that's exciting. And among those um, top winners nominations were Sing Street, which is coming to Broadway sometime. When Broadway comes back. When Broadway comes back, so that's very exciting. Um, A Strange Loop, Little Shop of Horrors, and Rock of Ages uh, all got nominations, so that's really exciting. It's good to have a little bit of fun news to share. Um, in addition to those awards, Legend of Off-Broadway Awards will be presented to Gretchen Cryer, Woody King Jr., Eric Krebs, and Barbara Zinn Krieger as well. Mark Blum, Wynn Handeman, and Julia Miles will be uh, honored with honored and inducted into the Off-Broadway Hall of Fame. And those are three wow. people who have recently passed away. Wow. Uh, Mark, Mark Blum died of the coronavirus complications. Wynne mm -hmm. Hamden was a, just a giant of Off-Broadway and Julia Miles as well. So it's really nice to have people like that that we've all been thinking about honored in that way, so posthumously. Yeah, I love that we get to celebrate them and induct them in that cool way. So mm -hmm. if you want to look out, you can see the whole list of nominations on the site. Congrats to all of those guys. And Beth, what do we it, got? It still feels like award season a, a little bit. So the Outer Critics Circle Awards have really changed up what they're doing this year. Mm -hmm. So they are going to have their virtual, I guess, ceremony on May 11th. And what they're doing is they're not making it competitive. So okay. instead of a winner in each category, they're going to celebrate up to five honorees in 26 categories. Oh. And there will be four recipients of the John Gassner Award, which honors uh, new American playwrights and does carry a monetary award. Uh, so that eligibility was March 6th, so before the shutdown. Mm -hmm. And over 150 uh, productions are eligible. So things are just proceeding with the Outer Critics Circle. Things are happening. Yeah. And third news story about awards in a row. So you're right. It does kind of feel like a little bit. Back in the groove a little bit. Um, but today we found out that Mario Cantone is that Kinsone? Yeah, Kinsone? the the laugh whore himself. And there we go. Just <laughs> so yeah, he's going to be hosting uh, the 2020 Lucille Lucille Lortel Awards. So there he is, looking charming. So that's really exciting. And we also found out who some of the presenters are going to be. Lin Manuel Miranda is going to be there. Phoebe Waller Bridge, Jagged Little Pills, Lauren Patton, Jordan Fisher, Jelani Aladdin, Jackie Hoffman is going to be there. So you know it's going to be it's so fun. <laughs> it's be so, fun. <laughs> um, so that all is going down on when is that? May third at seven o'clock. And it's a benefit for the Actors Fund. So everyone who's pulling together right now is trying to raise money for our friends in need and our people who are vulnerable, which is really wonderful. I love that. And in addition to the awards, we also have Tony winning producer Daryl Roth is going to induct Anna Devere Smith into the famed Playwrights Sidewalk. And that is 
so deserved. Um, Kelly O'Hara will present the Lifetime Achievement Award to Playwrights Horizons' Tim Sanford. Brian Stokes Mitchell will speak on behalf of the Actors Fund. So that's really awesome that he gets to be there as this is um, fundraising for them. And Nathan Lane will present this year's In Memoriam in recognition of those that we have lost. So that is going to be a really special night. And yeah, be sure to tune in. And again, you can see all those nominations on the site. And here's a pro tip. If you visit New York City and you go downtown to the West Village, the the Playwrights Hall of Fame sidewalk is in front of the Lucia Lortel Theater on Christopher Street, and you can see the playwrights honored there. Or if you're taking a walk with your mask and your gloves, that's something you can go check out. That's a hot tip, Beth. I'm here for you. <laughs> and what else do we have? This is cool. This is cool. Well, K-pop, which was a huge smash mm -hmm. off Broadway and uh, an, an award-winning show, is having an upcoming uh, cow call basically for its Broadway production, which is in the works. So it's a talent search and you go to kpopbroadway.com slash casting. And they're all the, you know, what they're looking for and how to submit your audition materials. But maybe, just maybe, you could be on Broadway in K-pop, which would be pretty awesome. So that's a fun way to spend your time and do a little self tape and send it on in. <laughs> what else are you going to be doing this time? You might as well shoot your shot, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. And in the ever-growing list of amazing things to listen to while in this quarantine, we get to hear Mr. Christopher Sieber right here do his own little spin on Frankenstein. On Dracula. Uh, this, oh, Dracula. Did I say Frankenstein? I'm here for you. I'm thinking of, was it Classic Stage Center just did the Dracula, Frankenstein, and Reverend But this is a take on Dracula that's comedic. It's a comedy of yeah. horrors. Ooh, terrors, not errors. A <laughs> comedy of terrors. So this is going to be through the Bro Broadway Podcast Network. And it's going to be a reimagined take. And it's also going to be benefiting the Actors Fund and Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. So that is really amazing. Um, this is going to be released in four installments. And the first one is going to be released on May 1st. It's written by Gordon Greenberg and Steven Rosen and directed by Greenberg. This cast is pretty insane. It <laughs> Chris Receiver is going to be Dracula, not Frankenstein. Laura Benanti as Van Helsing, Alex Brightman as Renfield, James Monroe Eigelhart as Dr. Westfeld, Ashley Park as Lucy Westfeld, Annalie Ashford as Mina Westfeld, John Stamos is in this as Lord Swivelhips, and Mrs. Doubtfire star Rob McClure is going to be both Lord Windsor and Lord Cavendish. So I, from that list alone, you know, it's going to be just absolutely it's gonna be funny. It's going to be serial for Broadway lovers. It's going to be <laughs> a little scary. So, so funny. It's scary. They so can party funny. if they want. Yeah. I think they should put that on the marquee if they have. Yeah. There's no marquee, but sure. All right. Awesome. Well, today's news was all like happy, fun stuff. I love that. Not bad at all. Not bad at all, but you know, we got a really awesome guest today. So I'm going to give you guys a quick little intro. So Beth, I'm going to scooch you out. Guys, as you know, we got Tony Yes by Kira with us today as a guest on Live at Five Home Edition, live on both Facebook and YouTube. He is currently set to star in Flying Over Sunset, the brand new original musical that's happening at Lincoln Center Theater. Um, was originally going to open this season before um, COVID-19 obviously shut down all the Broadway theaters. But good news, it is still happening and is going to be happening in the fall, which is just so exciting to know that we have something to look forward to. He earned a Tony nominee, um, Tony nomination for starring in On the Town. He has 11 Broadway credits to his name, including Chorus Line, Gypsy, Finding Neverland, Chicago. I could just go on and on, but we're so excited to have him here. Make sure you follow him on social at Tony Yazbek Official. And please leave all of your questions down in the comments below. Everyone, please welcome Tony and Beth. Hi, Tony. Hi, Beth. It's great to be here. Oh, we love having you. And first of all, where are you? Look, are you in a rehearsal room? What's going on in there? <laughs> oh, it's my own private little rehearsal room, I guess. This is uh, this is my studio, my house, and uh, I, I do a lot of dancing in here, a lot of singing. Uh, I keep all of my show memorabilia behind one door in the studio, and uh, it's sort of my little safe haven. Yeah. That's great. Now you're in Westchester, so you're not in New York City with like people upstairs and below you while no, you're. No, so if I'm tap dancing on this floor, nobody is going to come over and uh, tell me to shut the heck up. So uh, I'm I'm okay here. Yeah, there's a lot of screaming anyway. My my son runs around and screams, and so we're not affecting any neighbors at this time. 
which is good. Good to hear. How are you holding up? <laughs> you know, um, like everybody else, I mean, I, th I feel like I'm grateful to, you know, be in a house in a suburb and have a little bit of yard to run around. But at the same time, you know, it's tough. It's tough. Like everybody feels like they have their own level of tough. And I think the days are sort of blending into each other. We're not sure what day it is or what month we're in, but we know it's going. And lately it does feel like it's sort of going faster. At least it feels that way for me. Um, I think the first three or four weeks felt like we were trudging along, right? But now it just feels like it's a little faster. And I mean, I just, I really hope that we have an end in sight in some way and we can get back to the theater. I mean, that's just the hope. Okay, we have to, this is very special and weird for the Flying Over Sunset family because your first preview was on March yeah. 12th, which is when the shutdown was announced. So walk me through your March 12th. Well, first of all, I had three workshops of this beautiful show last year. We're all getting ready. We finally start to really fine tune the script and the story. The music is gorgeous. And uh, we have six weeks of rehearsal, including tech, two weeks of full tech. Wow. And here we are. The morning of everyone's getting ready for our first preview day and we have four or five hours of rehearsal uh, to finish tech and clean up and and uh, really just celebrate our first opening with an, you know, with an audience finally after a year of working on the show and uh, we have a meeting a midday that says you won't get to do that show and it was uh it was heartbreaking for all of us um as a cast we just we really fell in love with each other and it became a collaborative thing. And Lincoln Center Theater just offers such an incredible environment to create in. And so it was tough. It was tough to go away and not have an audience. I mean, to not have a full audience ever see what you're working on for that long. Um, so it didn't hit me until weeks later that this was done for a while. But, um, you know, we actually, we left that day, we didn't do a show. We did, we did do a run through later on and then we came back the next day and just had to have more rehearsal. Uh, James felt like he wasn't done yet with seeing everybody. So our director, James Lapine. So he brought everybody together. We did another run of our show and uh, we left. And my stuff is still in that dressing room. I was gonna ask right. you, you just sort of yeah. lost it, right? Yeah, we just left. I mean. And the, the building was going to be open for a while. And then obviously the restrictions got even more intense. Mm -hmm. And so they closed up shop completely. And uh, mm -hmm. my stuff is still there. I, I started decorating slightly here and there and put pictures in there. And I had my bed set up for naps. And it, it's all mm -hmm. locked down. And I, so it's going to be interesting to see how long it takes to go back. But I can tell you for sure we do have a show there. And it is ready to go. And it's beautiful and it's ready for audiences. So we're slated for the fall. We're just we're just hoping we can get back. That was a great announcement actually that Lincoln Center Theater was going to take this show and just sh shift it in time to the fall. So for people who don't know cuz this is a this is a show that needs a little explanation. It's James Lapine and Michael Corey and Tom Kitt wrote it. Yeah. And James Lapine's the director and you play and this is such perfect casting. You play Cary Grant. Yes, uh, never in my wildest dreams would I ever think I'd be playing Cary Grant on stage. And uh, it's just been amazing. I mean, the fact that Cary Grant is, is uh, singing on stage and he's tap dancing on stage. And, and he's uh, taking drugs just, on stage. What's that? And he's taking drugs on stage. Yeah, we, we probably want to <laughs> say he, he does trip on acid as well with uh, two other legendary figures, Claire Booth Luce and Aldous Huxley. And uh, by the time in the second act, they, they get together and they have an experience together. And what I realized today, what's so poignant about the show is that it really is about human connection. And what, what does it mean to be connected to somebody and spend some time with someone? And uh, those little simplicity, simplicities and basics of life, I mean, this is what we're all starting to realize is the most important thing. You know, I, I feel like I've taken so much for granted, you know, in my life and, and being quarantined really makes you think about that. And so um, I think uh, our show is gonna be ready for some, some great audiences to see and feel and it's gonna be more poignant than ever. So are you staying in touch with your castmates? 
current case. You know, it's funny. Um, uh, from time to time, I, I think actually almost every other day or so, there's a at 2 p.m. Uh, we would sign on, and we during our warm up, we have a group warm up uh, during rehearsals, and uh, during that warm up, we would do a physical warm up, and we would do a plank, and so everyone would do like a two minute plank together, and and tell stories to each other. And James Levine loved hearing stories from each other. And so uh, we still get on Zoom and we plank. We tell you stories. Plank on Zoom. Plank on Zoom. <laughs> and, um, and we just tell stories. We make sure we're checking in with each other, you know, making sure everyone's okay. Um, so it's nice to still have that bond, even though we're not rehearsing, we're not looking at those lines or scripts, but, um, but yeah, at least we can tune in with each other and make sure everyone's doing okay. Now, speaking of being in quarantine, you were part of an epic chorus line video <laughs> from the last, revive, last Broadway revival of a chorus line. It's revived all over the world all the time. Right. Tell me how that came together because everyone did the choreography. I mean, you were in your studio here. Yeah, Not it was uh, Jeffrey Schechter and Heather Parcells had this idea to, to get the original cast and the second year cast together and just have uh, individual uh, videos of the opening combination of a chorus line. And so we all just threw our videos in there and they edited it together. And gosh, I had no idea it was going to be like as emotionally compelling as it was. Um, but uh, it was pretty neat to see people having their families, their kids, their houses. You know, we, we've moved on. It's been, it's been almost 15 years since we started rehearsing that thing. So it's, uh, it's crazy how, how, how we still do what we do. And we love to dance. Everyone loves to dance still. Did and you have a choreography? Oh yeah. Oh, you, don't, <laughs> you don't forget that. You don't forget that. If someone says five, six, seven, eight, you go straight into chorus line. <laughs> you, ne you never forget that. It's just, it's thrilling, you know? So uh, yeah, it was, it was a neat thing to do. And a lot of um, media outlets picked it up. And so we were really grateful for that. So what's it like spending all this time with your son? How old is he now? He's three years old. Um, it's the best part of quarantine life is that I, I've been really blessed to be working a lot. And when you're in the theater, though, you, you're not at home a lot. So um, I've been bonding with him more than ever. And I never knew fatherhood could be like this. I mean, I, I always knew it, was, it would be a balance being a father to go to work and come home and and see him when I can. But I always felt like there was a void within me, like I'm not seeing him enough. I'm not being a a good enough father. And um, sometimes there's perks in horrible times, I guess. And those perks are spending time with your family. And my son is uh, the most remarkable thing to all of us. Uh, it's just pure joy. And just to watch him, and we're watching him get, get taller. And uh, we're starting to realize, like, we need to measure him. Like, we need to start measuring. Like, we haven't brought him to a doctor in a while. We, like, we should we should measure how high how tall he's gotten because he's. Does he have any dancing instincts? Yeah, he loves to he, he loves to dance. Um, he loves music. He loves it. He's sort of a dramatic kind of actor, -y, like comedian, and so he likes to dance in funny ways. And he puts his Sesame Street songs on, and <laughs> even um, you know, even in this this horrible time, like uh, you know, Amanda Cluton is going through this thing with her husband, Nick Cordero, who is sadly in the hospital with COVID. And, you know, we're, we're, tr we're, we're praying for him every day and we're wanting him to get out of that, uh, that unconscious state. And hopefully he wakes up soon. And I have to tell you, my son reminds us every day at six o'clock, he says, it's time to wake up, Nick. Oh. And we'll put the song on and he will, like a tradition, dance and sing around the couch and just keep moving and, and running and yell and wake up, Nick. And, so it's just, you know, he's a positive light for all of us. And uh, yeah, I'm blessed to be spending some time with him. So he's keeping you strong and limber through all of this. I mean, yeah, he, he keeps us on our toes. I mean, we're, I mean, if, if, I'm, if we're not dancing, we're constantly cleaning, you know, it's, right. it's a constant, like we, I'm, I clean the, the dishes in the kitchen twice a day. My wife does it five times a day. She, you know, it's every room in the house is like, five times. I mean, every parent knows what I'm talking about, but when you're home all the time, I start to realize like, wow, like my wife is like, she's a killer at what she does. It's amazing because now I'm sharing in those responsibilities even more. And uh, it's, uh, it's nonstop. <laughs> it's nonstop. 
So uh, hopefully you just get sleep through it all, you know? Well, I'm going to bring Caitlin back on because I know that there are many fans out there with questions, so we'll take some questions. You are very true about that. A lot of great <laughs> questions. We're going to start with Emily Nicole on YouTube. She says, Tony, what are some of your favorite Cary Grant movies? Hmm. Oh, gosh. Well, I, I mean, I, I was obsessed with some moments in Houseboat for a long time. I... I didn't get to know Cary Grant too well until the beginning of last year. And um, when I learned so much about all of his Cary Grant movies is he sort of had a different dialect for each one. And I don't know if he knew that or not, but you know, so Cary Grant created his own persona. I mean, he went to Hollywood, created his look. He was very into clothes and fashion, how he looked. And he put on a whole voice for himself that was not who And a new name. You know, brand new name. His name really was Archie Leach, Archibald Leach. So um, I got sort of obsessed with going through and looking at clips of all of his movies and seeing how slightly different he was in all of them. Um, so uh, that was interesting because he just loved to put on an act and put on that facade of, a, of an actor. And so I, I think it was really interesting to learn his, late, his life in his later years because when he had a child is when he really started to like, find meaning and find who he really was, um, which I can understand. And, uh, but you know, like little moments like in Houseboat where, um, you know, he's dancing with Sophia Loren and there's these subtle moments where there's nothing going on and there's no speaking and they just sort of feeling each other and each other's cheeks. And you know, they just sort of created that on the spot. I love moments like that in movies because you know that that's like movie magic. You can't recreate that. So it was really neat. To yeah. Watch. That's awesome. The stuff that's not in the script. That's yeah. The Those are fun. <laughs> um, okay. So this is a lot of people have this question, and I'm going to choose Amanda Claw Witters from YouTube. She wants to know what was it like to try to figure out how to act like you're on drugs without it kind of being too crazy over the top? And what's that like for you? Well, I've never done LSD. Uh, so, you know, you, you have to do a lot of research. Um, I've looked at a lot of things on YouTube. You can go down the YouTube hole and actually um, look at clips from the 50s, 60s and see um, psych psychologists uh, um, in, in their study with a patient on LSD. And it is fascinating. So I watched a lot of clips like that. I, I read some, some books. I read Elvis Huxley books. Mm -hmm. um, um, and so what, what I've learned about it is it's quite lucid in a way. It's not like you're doing some weird drug or you're drunk or you're out loopy. You're, you're quite in your body. Everything is just really heightened. Um, so I sort of like, like went back to my own roots and, and, uh, one of my mentors is Tina Landau and I, I've done a, a bunch of shows with her and I studied her viewpoints technique. And I have to say viewpoints sort of helped me understand how to be very conscious and very aware. And what viewpoints also does is it makes things heightened in your life. Like the way you see you things, colors, sounds. Yes. Yeah. Viewpoints, it's, it's sort of a, it's sort of a, a study in theatricality that helps you um, put a, a language to uh, a certain composition. So, mm -hmm. so I can use viewpoints. It, it basically helps you trust your instincts. Mm -hmm. In other words, it gets us out of our brains and thinking what's right and wrong. And it allows us to just be. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times you use viewpoints in certain, um, in certain casts and shows that I've done to create something and surprise yourself rather than trying to think what's right and wrong on the page. Well, let's just explore and find something new. And I think that's what's so beautiful about theater is surprising yourself. Um, and so I sort of used that to um, find new things, you know, and we started running the show back in tech and I would just try to throw out what I did the night before mm -hmm. and try something new the next day. And that's, that's the part where I felt like maybe, Maybe I'm understanding a little bit of what this LSD trip could do because I'm exploring things for the first time in the most heightened, imaginative, wonderful way. So, yeah, I've never done it though. 
clarifying. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, I think we have time for one more question. And this is going to be from Enya. And she okay. wants to know, Tony, if you could see any sunset in the world, what sunset would you want to see? Oh. Deep question, Enya. Yeah, I'm such a water guy. I, I really, my soul lives near the water, near the beach. Pisces, hello. Um, but uh, that's a good question. I mean, right now, ugh, I'll take any water, you know? I mean, a lot of us are dreaming of the beach. I, I see some friends that are near the beach right now. I'm like, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> um, you know, I, I always felt like my soul lived near the California beaches, like, you know, Malibu. We speak of Malibu in our show, actually. But mm -hmm. I had a great experience in Malibu Beach years ago. and I felt uh, my spirit flying there. And uh, I would love to go back there sometime and just take that in. I love the beach at night, too. Who doesn't? Like a beach where nobody's on it and you just walk out there and you hear the ocean and you just like lift your arms up and like surrender to the universe. And then you realize how small you are. That's like, those are my favorite moments on the beach. I love that. Wow. Now I'm just going to be dreaming of the beach now the rest of the day. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Well, Tony, thank you so much for my pleasure. joining us today. Absolutely. It's great to spend some time with you guys. Yeah. We can't wait to see you in the fall. Okay. I hope we're there. Can't wait to have some audiences. We'll be there. We will. Okay, Caitlin. There. It's April. Take us on out. Oh, it's Thank April, you. guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to give it, take us out. Thank you guys uh, so much for tuning in today for another episode of Live at Five Home Edition. You can follow us wherever you get your podcast by searching for hashtag Live at Five and hitting that subscribe button. Guys, make sure you, it's a beautiful day outside in New York City. Go outside, put a mask on, put some gloves on, stay far away from each other. Um, have a great rest of your night and be sure to tune in next time when we talk to Casey Levy all about Caroline or Change. <laughs>